or person, person or group or organization who is uh, we are dealing with, we call them party. Okay? So we want to make sure that we have the right parties, people or groups or organizations at the negotiation. So first discuss this question with your partner. Who would be potential interested parties when you are buying a car? Okay. 
right? Relate the relationships, right? Map has a relationship. List is just like this, but map looks more like this, right? So in the mapping, we're also interested in the relationships between our people, right? So how do they relate to each other? So the first one is, we're going to talk about these in a little bit more detail, but the first one is, does the map include the highest value players? To ensure your deal can create the greatest possible value. Number two, does the map include the full set of influential payers? Number three, does your map identify the blockers? Number four, does it pinpoint agents who have the wrong incentives? Number five, does it anticipate potential negotiations with those who must approve the deal? Number six, does it take account of the people who must implement the agreement? And number seven, are too many parties unnecessarily complicating the agreement? But that was very quick, that's just overview, right? Now we look in more detail. So the first one is about high value players. Do you follow sports? No, do you like sports? Yes. In the US they use a lot of sports vocabulary, right? So they talk about players, like sports players, right? Who is a high value player on the Korean soccer team? Uh, I think Son Heung Min Son in New Zealand. How much did he get sold to Tottenham for? Uh, he's 20 million pounds? Uh, I think. So that's 33 million. 33 million, maybe dollars, right? So <clears throat> we have to decide who might value this deal the most. Is this player a part of the negotiation? So sometimes we look too narr narrowly, mainly in familiar circles, determining the parties with whom we should negotiate. Right? So if you're buying a car, you might say, my father has a friend who is a car dealer. Okay? So he's very familiar. He's my father's friend. Okay? So we'll go there and negotiate with him to buy the car. But we could be missing out some high value player. Right? His car yard might be very small, and a very small selection of cars. So the type of car I want, he might not have that type of car. Okay? So we need to find another person, or garage, who is a much better selection, maybe better price. Okay? So, <clears throat> on the other side, if we are the selling, we saw the example before of the guy of Staples who wanted to sell his company, okay, and he was having trouble selling his company because the angel investors were not, uh, they were making a kind of cartel to reduce the price of his company. So he went to find another high value player, okay, somebody else who was interested in his company, okay. So the player could also be inside the company. So we're talking about external, uh, but also it could be, I mean, external in finding another, another car dealer or another investor, right? But it could be inside the company that you're talking to. So for example, I'm in the uh, company, I can find an internal champion. Do you understand champion? Yes. So in the other company. So you can find and nurture an influential internal champion elsewhere on the other side. So that's somebody who really understands and benefits from the deal. So you could be negotiating with somebody from the other company. Uh, here you are a procurement agent. Do you understand procurement agent? We have supplier is uh, the person selling their product, right? Procurement agent. Procurement is what's another word in English for procurement? Buying is 
is selling. What is procuring? Buying. Buying. So they are just official words, right? We don't. If you look for a job, you don't get a job in. You get a job in procurement, right? Or supplying. So procurement means buying, and supplier means selling, right? So this would be the traditional relationship. Here we have the supplier and the procurement agent. But here we have a supplier salesperson, right? And they're dealing with the procurement agent. So this is you, supplier salesperson. You're trying to sell the procurement agent, the buyer. But the buyer is not interested in your product. For example, the buyer is in Latte Mart, and you're a farmer. And what do farmers sell to Latte Mart? Rice, for example, right? You want to sell rice to Latte Mart. But this procurement agent says, your price is too high, your quality is too bad, I don't want your rice. Okay, but you think your rice is a good idea, very good, right? And your CEO, let's say you have a farm cooperative, so you have a CEO of the farm organization, and the CEO of the Latte Mart, they already want, they want to make this deal, right? They said, that, so now you're negotiating with them. So you can find an internal champion inside Latte Mart who knows about your farm, right? Or they get some advantage. They get some advantage if you sell your rice to Latte Mart. So they are going to talk to the procurement agent, right? And try to convince, help to make the deal. So you can add another party in this way too. This is called internal champion. So usually this you have to have some value. This could be a little bit like corruption, right? Let's say you have some contact in Latte Mart, okay? And then your rice is not good quality and it's very expensive. But the contact says to the procurement agent, hey, that's my brother-in-law, that's my sister-in-law, please buy their rice. Okay? That's different, that's corruption, right? That's not a good way to do things, right, normally. But this person understands that your product is a very good product, but this person doesn't understand, right? They don't understand that your rice is a high quality, okay? Because they are maybe just hired in the buying area, they don't know much about rice, okay? But this person is the expert on the food area in Latte Mart, and they know that your rice is a very good quality, okay? So they can explain to this person that your rice is very high quality so we need to buy the rice so then they will make the deal helps you as a supplier yes so you know that you're doing this deal with the procurement agent and the procurement agent doesn't know anything about rice Okay? And they're being very hard. They won't give you, they won't buy your product. They want to reduce the price. But this person understands that your rice is high quality and that it's good for Latte Mart. If they buy your rice, more people will come to Latte Mart. Right? Government to is this help the supply less internal No, no, government is not internal, it's external. Internal is inside the company. Right? Does everybody understand internal? inside the company that you're negotiating with, right? So this person understands that you're bringing a benefit or value to Latte Mart. So they will help you to make the deal. So you have to make a map, right? Instead of doing this, you make a map and you find a person in Latte Mart who's responsible for the quality of the food. <coughs> so they can be in the party in the negotiation. They can also come to the table, right? Because they if your rice has low quality, do you want to call this person for the negotiation? No, they're going to see clearly your rice has low quality and they'll say no, no deal, right? So only if you have some good value for the company, then you can find some internal champion and convince the internal champion that your product is good. So it's the uniquely high value that you offer to the champion Value that is at risk if they have no deal. So if they have no deal, they have to use a lower quality rice. Okay? 
That gives the internal high value player a stake in the success of the negotiation. So we have to remember that this internal champion, they are acting in their interest. They're not trying to help us because they, want to, they like us or they want to help us. They're acting in their interest. Their interest is to have higher quality product. And they, the point is they understand better than this person. So that is the internal champion. Okay, so before the negotiation, before you go to the negotiation, this is in the setup, try to identify or find and meet. You can meet them for dinner or any other time or contact and call them. Okay? Or just identify them and ask that they come, ask them to come to the negotiation. So that is the internal champion. But just to move back, this is the simpler one. We talked about it at the start, adding a party. So here I am a seller, packaging company, and I have two buyers. So I have a new technology for packaging goods very well. Okay? So I have two buyers here that are competing against each other. But I'm not very happy with their price. So what I do is I find another company, in this case it's a consumer products company, who's very interested in packaging, because packaging is more important for consumer products and advertising, right? So I found a higher value player. My product is higher value to them. Okay? Now what's going to happen to these guys? Are they going to increase their price or reduce their price? Increase their price. Increase their price. They know a higher value player has arrived. Okay? It was the same for the staples. The guy was selling his company. He had some investors who were interested. Then he added another party. Okay? And then these guys increased their price. So this is a simpler one. Just adding, adding a party can help to... Uh, before the negotiation, right? Internal champion. Okay. So let's just check our understanding of this one. So discuss with your partner what is an internal champion. We're talking about parties.
그럼 저 사람이 보증을 해준다는 거죠. 제품이 좋다 하는지 안 좋다 하는지. What is it that the internal champion understands that the buyer doesn't understand? Don't know. Okay, anybody else? Internal champion know the supply product quality is good. So the keyword is value, right? Yes. They understand that you have a high value. Okay? This one doesn't understand as well that you have a high value. So an example would be in the company, you're negotiating a new contract in the company, okay? So you just negotiate the contract with the HR department or the administration, right? They don't really know if you're a good worker or not, okay? But here is your boss. Your boss knows you're a really good worker and you have a high value to the company, okay? Do you want your boss to be involved in the negotiation or not? Why not? HR don't understand you're a good worker. Your boss understands you're a very good worker. He. Do you want your boss to be involved in the negotiation? Yes. Yes, of course, right? HR, is, they don't know whether it's that well. Maybe they see just the result of numbers, right? And they just say, okay then, you can get just a new contract with the same salary, okay? But your boss knows that you're doing a lot of other work, which is not included in the numbers. Only your boss knows. Okay? So only your boss understands that you are very high value for the company. Okay? So if you just make a deal with the HR, they don't give any rates, right? But maybe your boss can talk to the HR department, and your boss can say, that person is doing a very good job, and we really need to keep them in the company, so please raise their salary, right? And the HR department might say, no, look at their results, right? And then the boss has to negotiate with the HR department. Okay? Then in the end, HR department can raise the salary. Okay? So then this person was clever. The not clever person just tried to negotiate with the HR department by themselves. Okay? But this person added another person, the cha internal champion. Right? They're a boss in that case. What about if you're doing a really bad job, but your numbers look okay? Should you ask your boss to help you in the negotiation? No. Your numbers look okay, but you have a really bad relationship with your boss. Your boss thinks you're useless? No. <laughs> Do you want to add your boss to the negotiation? Oh, no. No, alright. Do you understand the difference? Yes. Only this person understands that you have high value, and the other person doesn't understand. Okay? Then you add them to the negotiation. Okay. Any questions about that? What often happens is these CEOs will say, he will ask him to buy the rice. And he will say, yes, I'd like to have a relationship with your company. Let's negotiate. But do the CEOs negotiate about with each other all the time? No. No, they don't, right? They just say, like, they may just say to each other, we can possibly negotiate a deal. Okay? So they want to have a deal. But if, they, if this is the person who, these are the two people who are negotiating, right? So another way is I can talk to my CEO. CEO can talk to the buyer CEO, the internal champion. So this is what we're talking about making a map, not a list, right? In the list we would just have one, two, three, four, five, but this is a map. In the map we can see the relationships. Okay? So by understanding this, we can understand how to make having the right parties to make a better result. Any more questions? Good to ask a question. <laughs> Adding a party is a little bit easier. Okay, so then the next one is have you mapped all the potentially influential players? Do you understand? What's another word for potentially? Possibly. 
right? Possibly. What does influential mean? They affect the game, right? Influential player. Ronaldo is an influential player. He scores some goals, right? Changing. Influential means you can change things, right? So a great salesperson wants to identify and win over the decision makers who may be different than those at the table. So an informal negotiation sometimes can be more important than the formal one. So you should be on the lookout for parties who may not be signing the contract but have influence. So you may be negotiating with somebody and you think they're the one they're signing the contract, they have the power. But actually they they don't have the influence. Somebody else is influencing them. Somebody else has power over them. So we have to identify who is that person. Okay, be on the lookout. Okay, and we can do some informal negotiation with them. So here's an example. So this buyer was selling buying a house in a nice location, and the owner of the house was selling the house. Okay? So the owner owns the house, they're signing the contract, it looks like they're the influential player. Okay? But in this case, the owner got divorced and he remarried with another woman. Okay? And the woman he remarried doesn't want to live in the same house. That's why he has to sell the house. Okay? She doesn't want to live in the same house as his ex-wife. So the buyer, the owner actually doesn't want to sell the house. Just he, his wife wants him to sell the house, right? So it wasn't an easy negotiation. The owner keeps delaying. The buyer couldn't understand why doesn't he want to sell. He keeps making excuses and delaying, okay? So in the end, he understood, he found out and he understood about his wife, that his wife was the one who wanted to sell the house. But the owner didn't really want to sell the house. Okay, so here we have the buyer, he was dealing with the agent, so actually it was the wife who was the main influential player here, she was telling her husband what to do, okay, so if we didn't think about the wife, we wouldn't understand, maybe we wouldn't sell the house, okay, so because uh, the buyer knew about the wife, the buyer was able to work together with the wife, Two of them was able to work together to make the owner sell the house, like on the same team, right? So the buyer wants him to sell the house, the wife wants him to sell the house, but the owner doesn't want to sell the house, okay? So if we know that information, he learned through the agent. The agent told him, real estate agent told him that the wife wants to sell but the husband doesn't, right? So he was able to, with the wife, together they made some. Uh, investment plan to show to the husband that the house price is going down the house price is well he made the plan and he gave it to the wife and then the wife showed to the husband okay so he made a plan to show that the house price is going down and that if you invest your money somewhere else in stocks or another place you can get bigger profit so he went and made this investment plan he gave it to the wife and the wife showed it to the owner and the owner decided, yes, let's sell the house in the end, okay? Because he got this investment plan. But if he just gave directly to the guy, it might not have worked. Do you understand that story? Yes. Okay, so we have to look out for the decision makers. So this good salespeople, even though they mightn't have learned that, salespeople tend to do that, right? Naturally. Okay, they try to find... If, couple comes in to buy a house in the Budong San, or a car, they will try to see who is the decision maker, right? Who is the ultimate decision maker? Or what do they want? What does that decision maker want? Okay? So, uh, we can, another example here is that uh, we can also invite, like he could invite her for meet with the agent together, right? Or we could invite another influential player for dinner. Okay? We have another relationship where we have another influential player outside and before the negotiation we could invite them for dinner.
okay, and try to find out what does the influential player want, right? What makes them happy, and how can we uh, find find out what they really want? Okay. So next one, have you included those involved in the decision making and governance process? Do you understand governance? What does governance mean? Yes, control or like uh, overlooking, right? Checking. Checking is another word for governance. So sometimes we can give favorable economics, like a low price. Right? This can be necessary for the deal to succeed, but then that's not sometimes it's not enough given the range of interests that matter. Okay? So we have to keep all the influential internal players on your radar screen. Do you understand radar? Yes. Such though, right? Or yeah, it looks for the planes in the sky. So keep them on your radar, especially those who can block the deal. So people who can block the deal. Don't lose sight of their interest or their capacity to affect the deal. So there was some big merger, multi-million pound merger in the US between Glaxo's Bitline, right? Uh, they wanted to get together and everything was good, but there was some higher people in the company who didn't want the deal to happen. Maybe because they're going to lose power, right? If they merge, they could lose their position or lose their comfortable life, right? So those kind of high up decision maker didn't want to accept the deal or the merger. So we have to be aware of that, those people, and we have to also think about their interests. We can't forget about them. Another example of this is a US company which went to a Central American company, Honduras, and they wanted to do some projects there like mining. Do you understand mining? Yes. So they thought that they were just negotiating with the government. Okay? Uh, that the government would just decide whether they can make the mine or not. But actually, the government was not the only person. There was a lot of different... There was the unions. Do you understand unions? Yes. Worker union. There was the Environmental Protection Agency. Okay? There was the local residents. So even though the government agreed to the deal, all of the local residents and the agencies and so on, they all had demonstrations. And the government, anti-American, because they, America had some problem in that country before. Okay? So they had a lot of anti-American demonstration and they couldn't do the mining in the end. Okay? The government was then influenced by those people. So they have to, we have to think about Anybody who can block the deal and keep them on our radar and meet their interest. Even just talking to them, right, helps. Talking to them, you can offer them some uh, things to help the deal. So, <coughs> just we are going to talk briefly about the last couple of parties. So, have you mapped influential players with the wrong incentives? So, if you have the skilled and informed agents faithfully representing you, they will make negotiating choices that are aligned with your interest, with what you want. But the reality of this agency often departs from the ideal. So, do you understand agent? Yes. Agent is real estate agent, Budong San, right? Yes. We saw in the last one, buyer, agent, Budong San, seller, owner, right? So the agent is in the middle, okay? Can we trust our agent or do they have the wrong incentive? Okay? So maybe, I, who do you think could have the bigger problem here? The agent is acting for the owner or the buyer, usually? Owner. Owner, they're acting for the owner, right? Helping the owner. Can you see any problem here where the agent might not get the best deal for the owner? They might have the wrong incentive. When does the agent get paid in the Budong San? Uh, 
contract the plan and yeah. owner give the commission to the agent. Yeah, so after the sale, they get commission. So can you see any problem here? If we agent to write, write the price mm -hmm. to buyer or owner, mm -hmm. he ships the extra piece. They, they lock the extra, extra charge in real charge, real price. Uh, they could lie to the owner, so they could tell them that they sold it to the buyer at a more expensive price and keep yes. money. Yes. Okay, but I think that's difficult because it's written on the contract. So I don't think they'll be, they'll be able to do that. What is one thing they could do? What if they think the buyer is not going to buy the house? The buyer is not going to buy the house. So the owner says, don't sell for less than $300,000, right? But the buyer is not going to buy the house. And the, Buddha, the agent thinks, I can't find another buyer for that house. Just this buyer is the only one. This house is in the countryside, not many buyers. What could the agent do? Hmm? They want to get their commission, right? So what are they going to do? They try to get the price more. So they just sell the house at a lower price to the buyer than the owner said, right? So the owner asked them, don't sell for this. But then the agent could sell for this. And then the agent could tell the, the owner, uh, I'll never get a better price, and this is the best price that I can get, right? Uh, and try to convince the owner that that was the best price. What did the agent get? They got their commission, right? Maybe they need money this month to do something. Okay? So can you see the problem here for the owner? This, in this case, the problem is for the owner. Maybe the agent just wants to get their commission, more commission, so they'll just sell at a low price. Okay? Even though the agent officially is representing me, trying to get the highest price, if they get a higher price, they'll get slightly more commission. But they may decide just I want to, this month I need a lot of commission, or it's I don't want to wait a year to sell the house, I want to sell it now. Okay? And lower the price. So in reality, agency can depart from the ideal. So one guy, another example is one guy was doing uh, for five years, had been selling the same product, right? We have a buyer and a seller in the company. So he was selling <coughs> to the buyer every year for five years, the same thing, right? Let's say it's bicycles, okay? The bike, bike shop or a bike store. So this year, the buyer said, no, I don't want to buy your bicycles, right? I'm going to buy the bicycles from a competitor. I'm not going to buy your one. So the seller was very confused because he has the best ones, better than the other person. Okay? And he was going to give the same price to the lower quality bike. So he wondered, what's the problem here? Why is the buyer changing? Not, I'm a good seller, I was never late, always high quality product. So he found out that the buyer was getting commission for new contracts. <laughs> right? No commission for old contracts. Okay, do you understand? Yes. Just he gets commission if he makes a new contract from a new seller. But the existing seller, he doesn't get any commission. So that's what he found out. Okay? So what do you suggest the seller to do in this case? He found this information. He placed, he, a seller give the bike price place or give the commission to buy. He can give him some extra payments of commission. Yes. But he's losing money then. Is there any other way he can solve that? Even though you get the commissions right now, the quality of the products are much better he doesn't care, he's just a buyer. He might leave the company next year. He just wants to get his commission, bonus. Seller find you buy it. He's just like an agent for the company, right? 
to understand. Agent for the bike store. Find another buyer, but it's not easy to find another buyer. This is the biggest bike store in the country. Okay, so he found a way to change his order slightly, so it looks like a new order. So he met the guy for dinner, he invited him for dinner, okay? and they discussed, and he said, is there any way that you can get a commission for new customers, even though I supply you? And he said, yes, if you change your order a little bit, right, introduce some new bicycle or that kind of thing, then I can treat it like it can be a new contract. So they met for dinner and they figured out how to make it into a new contract. Then he got his commission and he ordered the bicycles. So they solved the problem. Okay? So this problem is the wrong incentive. Do you understand wrong incentive? Yes. Wrong incentive. Incentive means money we give to people to do something. During the financial crisis there was the wrong incentive for the banks. They were getting commission based on just uh, profit on return on equity. So they were just taking on a lot of debt and risk. Okay? So if we have the wrong incentives, we can get a bad deal. So we need to understand the agents, especially this is for agents, right? We should understand the, about the agent relationships, their interest. Okay? What is the interest of the agent? How do they get their commission? Okay? Uh, their ability to filter information. So the agent didn't tell the owner all the information, okay? The agent didn't tell him all the information. Sometimes the agent can leave out the information, okay? And they can shape decisions away from your scrutiny. So we have to be careful when uh, we are dealing with agents. Do you have any question about that one? So then we have just to finish the last uh, just briefly, we did up to number four, we'll just briefly discuss the five, six, and seven. So, uh, we already, number five is quite similar to number three, but here it might be that here we have, for example, the SEC in the US. Okay, so. The SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission in the US, they have to approve acquisitions and mergers. So we also have to think about them. Uh, does your map take account of those who must implement the agreement? So another problem with an agent doing the negotiating is that they, they might not understand that after the agreement, uh, what needs to happen. So we need to 